As always, don't forget to check the video description down below for the best price on tools and parts I use in today's video. Today, hopefully you're watching this video before it hits the fan, but I'm going to be talking about the Vanos gears and assemblies, and it's like a 2A82, 2A83, 2A87. These are the codes that can be thrown up, and a lot of times you're like, oh, I can just put a little Vanos solenoid in. But a lot of times it's actually this, and at this time, I believe all of the warranties and recalls are up. They did a 10-year extension in 2010. It's now 2020, and it's past that 10-year. I tried so hard. I missed about like two weeks. This was a few months ago, and I was like, ah, it'll be fine, and ended up my bolts um, broke off, and it was still fine, though. So I'm going to show you, and we'll talk about that as soon as this code comes on you may want to go ahead and do this so it doesn't break and then possibly bend or break a valve so let's go ahead and check it out okay so if you do get one of those codes and you tried replacing the solenoids valves the solenoid the vano solenoids which are these two guys right here they're unplugged right now but it's it's a plug-in right there it's like a 10 there you replace those and the code does not go away, you're gonna wanna go ahead and try this. Don't just wait, don't just be like, oh, check engine light is just on. Because what'll happen is what happened to me, and if I can find here, this is one where it's intact and you can see all the bolt heads are still on. And my other one, he's right over here. And as you can see, some is broken off in there. Those backed out. This is what they looked like. They're broken. Um, let's see, let me see the other side. Looks like that. They kind of break off. And then they sit in the engine. And then you got to fish them out of the engine. And then you got to hope that the valves were not bent. In my case, the valves weren't bent. That's another thing I looked up. And I could not find a lot of good information. I found one video. I'll try and link that down below in the description. Where the guy was replacing these. He said he got a no start kind of issue and loss of compression, he changed the thing and it fixed the car. So the good thing is if you're just idling and you start it, it cuts off on you and it doesn't start back up and it sounds like there's no compression. When the bolts, and it's usually this one, like the video I watched in mine, it came off the, the intake. This is the exhaust. When these bolts, you'll see right here, here and here, when they break off, the gear is still hooked up but the cam is now free because the cam is hooked up to this. So the camshaft itself is hooked up to this piece, but this piece goes free. So if you think about it, if a piston comes up and hits a valve and you're not going fast and it doesn't just keep tapping it, it might just move out of the way. And I think that's what happened in my case. So what you could do, if that code pops up, you try the solenoids and there's nothing, you can take off the valve cover. I have a video showing you how to take off the valve cover and that'll get you here. Then what you can do is you can come over here and I believe this is correct. You know, you're just gonna have to find out cause I didn't try this, but I believe you can just come out here and take each of these bolts off. Now they are weak and they do break. So you might break them off trying to take it out, but it might be worth trying, even risking breaking them. But you can go ahead and take like two out here and then put your two new ones in. Do it one at a time. And then you can come down here. And I'll just show you your crank pulley. And that's a 22 or a 7 8. Spin it right. And then it'll also spin this. And then it'll give you access to that one and the one on the other side. So that's one option. That may or may not work. They may break when you try and take them out. You can do the same for your exhaust. And as you can see, you only have like one area here, so you're gonna have to spin it for each one. And that is one option. The next option, which is gonna be more time consuming, but not as bad as pulling the head, which is what I thought I was gonna have to do, is you can take the valve cover off, and then you can actually take these gears off and put on the updated ones. I'll put the uh, link in the video description below for these two Banos cam gear type guys right here and there's an exhaust and there's an intake I would definitely go ahead and replace both because you do not want to do this job again now I saw one guy there's there's a spot over here and I made a video for this too how to set up the timing but there's a spot right down in here Let's see if you can see you might just have to go watch that video but you can maybe see the hole back there but there's a hole you're gonna have to get this tool in and 
it's gonna be here's a little plug there will be a plug it'll be sitting in the engine like that you put your little pick in pull it out and then you're gonna reach down in there with this tool and kind of push it in and that's gonna hold your flywheel again I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that because you can watch the video where I go all through doing that so push it in lock your flywheel and then you're gonna come over here you're gonna make sure you get the it's like a Q code it's like a like one of those little digital codes that'll probably be on the back side Let's see if I can see it please for the illustration just show me show me okay you're gonna have to watch that video but there's two sides there's this side which is blank when you spin it 180 it'll look like this again but it'll have like a q code right there so what you want to do is if you're going to replace these guys is go ahead and spin it get it get it to the q code q code facing up and then you will go ahead and get your tool basically this goes up over there these lock down onto the cam gears again watch the video if you want to see how to do this in depth i'm just trying to give you an idea and say hey it's not that hard and it can be done and it does not always bend your valves so that's the key point in this video then you're going to hook this thing up to right here and once you have it all locked down you'll have your crank locked down you'll have your gears locked down then you take a 16 you can take this off you can take that off and the other important thing is a flathead screwdriver where'd my flathead screwdriver go here you want to take a flathead screwdriver or a pry bar and this guide i'm going to show you you're going to come in right here and i'm hitting the guide right now and you're going to push down you can see i just push down and if i take my finger you'll see this chain hold on oh the chain will loosen right up if you push down so again, watch that other video for more in depth. I'm just really going over the problem and letting you know you can just replace these gears. They're about, I want to say 150 bucks just for the two gears. And of course, you're going to want a head, not a head gasket, a valve cover gasket, get some intake manifold gaskets. And if you can do it without taking the intake manifold off, that's awesome. But I'm just saying, hey, it can be done. You just basically take these out lock in all your time and stuff, put the new ones in. Um, you And the other reason I'm making this video is I saw a guy do this, but he tried to take all these guides off and stuff. You don't have to take the guides off either. All you gotta do is take your screwdriver, and again, it's see what that chain is touching? It's that guide right there. You are, and you can, you can hook all your stuff up and push down. You're actually only gonna have the back side of the thing holding the cam, the whole camshafts you're gonna have them held and then you're gonna push down and then you're gonna work this the gear into the chain and all that and then you're gonna start your screw in there and then just kind of get them both on there and then you'll be able to let off of that and then you will be able to tighten them down with your piece and it's got two little it's got two little studs here and the way this is aligned is it doesn't matter how you screw these in but these holes have to be aligned and what this does is these little knobs plug into the holes this bolts down and then you'll be able to tighten through there and then that other big black piece will be sitting back up here and you'll have those other two pieces holding co 2 slots they will be holding your camshaft still so that's pretty much it it's not that bad of a job i'd take a day for it I want to say the valve cover calls for, I don't know, three and a half hours or four hours maybe. And then, of course, this is going to take you some time too. So I'd say maybe five, maybe five, six, seven hours or something like that. But again, it's no comparison to 20, 30 hours of taking your head off, getting your head resurfaced, um, changing valves and putting a head gasket on. So if you could just change these gears... Or even just pay somebody to change the gears before it all breaks and stuff. So anyways, that's just a run through. I'm not going to give the whole, you know, in-depth kind of thing. I also took the starter out. You probably, you don't really need to take the starter out. I just wanted to see the flywheel. Um, it was helpful to take that intake manifold off to be able to 
kind of time again i saw a guy did it and he did not take the intake manifold off so that would save you a bunch of time as well so anyways thanks for watching guys i hope this helps somebody there was very limited information when i was looking all this stuff up like does it bend the valves well i've seen at least two cases where it did not bend the valves so maybe there's hope oh important once you put all this stuff back together and you've got it all timed um, you are going to want to go through and look for your little bolts and studs. One guy said drop the drain pan and like mine, I had two sitting right up in there and they're not magnetic. So you got to get creative. I had one sitting down there. I had one sitting right in here and it dropped. So probably going to have to pull the oil pan and you may have to do that as well. And then once you get all this done, you're going to want to take all your spark plugs out. Okay. And then take like a compression tester and like this guy right here and basically you'll have where's my little hose right here you'll have something like this you'll screw it down and to each spark plug hole and then you'll hook your compression gauge and then spin the crank over a bunch of times i think it's got to go over twice because i think through every four spins there is a through every four cycles there's an exhaust and a compression so on the exhaust stroke, you're not going to get a lot of compression, but on that compression stroke, you know, just look for, this gauge is bad. I was getting 60 PSI for each one. I think it should be like 150 or something like that, but I know this gauge is just not very accurate. Just make sure you're getting consistent, consistent pressure for each cylinder. Like if you saw on your gauge, if you saw hundred for each one and then 30 for one, then you know, Hey, you did bend a valve and it's not getting compression. So again, just make sure you're getting compression on each one because if you're not and you are not getting compression on one cylinder then you know you do need to pull the cylinder head and do all that stuff that is gonna not be fun at all so anyways that is pretty much it guys um thank you all for watching if you have any questions just you know use the comments below it's kind of like a message board you guys can help each other out and, on this issue and that's it. If I see any questions that I can't answer, I will. And there you go. Thanks for watching.